Okay, so at the end of the last video, I was trying to figure out how to set the video to reset. And I didn't want to just have this creature kind of pop up into its original position because the whole point is that it, it kind of blends into the landscape from the beginning, right? So what I did is I used a tween and that kind of faded the character in slowly. But I need to mask that and slow that down a little bit so the eye gets used to it with the changing mist. So I'm adding, just duplicating and then playing with the atmosphere a little bit as it resets. It's like distractions in a magic trick, right? You don't want anything just too obvious. And then I'm also trying to roll back these blues as I go. Because even though they, they've come in really slowly, they've dramatically changed the background over time. Yeah, good. So that's layer eight. This one. All these should be turned off. Because remember, when I tweened, it didn't roll back all these blues. I have to do that manually. Good. And then the last one. A little bit more this variation. So you want some things to be animated smoothly and transition smoothly. You want other things to kind of distract and be a movement your eye can trace. Let's see how this looks. All right, so if I'm an art director, I can be pretty picky. And I can say, yeah, I think, I think it works. I like the bug movement. I like the changing of the mist. But in this area where I do the speeding up of the tongue, which is effective for the tongue, here, especially the, uh, the 0.15 timing, I don't want the background to change so much there. So from there to there to there, the background changes a lot. And it's really this one. So what I want to do is make this one not such an oddball in terms of the background. So I can go back and adjust the lighting just for that one. Let's 
Seems like there's a lot of blue. And I have a few uh, <laughs> a few more atmosphere layers than I probably need to make it rational. This one a little less yellow. Let's see, a little bit more here. And that should help a little bit. Let's see. So all those little atmospheric changes, you can really tell as it animates, right? Okay. So what I like about it is just by playing with the atmosphere, it makes these clouds, which look like really far away, like there's a storm going on and that there's mist kind of always going through it. It's always changing the colors and the lighting a little bit. I'm able to track the motion of the major characters and be a little bit surprised by the change in the environment. And I think all the timing works. Now, I told you there was another way to set to reset. And so I'll show you what that is really quickly, but let me save it first because I don't think I'll actually use it, but it will be humorous to see. So I'll save it. My final animation for this is shorter than it has been in the past, but it's got a lot more layers than other ones I've done. It is 1.3 gigabytes and it is 37 frames, right? But I have more than 37 layers making those 37 frames. So I'll show you how you can reduce the memory. But before we do that, how can I set it to reset? I can select every frame by clicking on the last frame, holding down shift, clicking on the first frame, and then going to the frame options within the frame window, or the timeline window, and say copy frames. There is no shortcut for this. You have to do it through the window options. So command C won't work. Then I'm going to go to those window options again and then say paste frames. And then it's going to ask me, where do you want to paste these frames? I want to paste them after the selection. So it's just going to make a duplicate of all of my frames just going to make two sets of them. Okay. So I had 37 frames. Now I have twice that. And it, if this isn't going to change my animation at all, it's basically playing the frames through once, then playing a copy of the frames through once. But while those copy frames are still selected, I can go to the timeline options and say reverse their order. And now it will play them forward and then backwards. Right. So let's watch what that looks like. And it's pretty funny because they're going to be regurgitating the things that they're eating. So he eats the bug, the guy gets eaten, it resets, but now it fades out again. Now the guys get spit up. Now the bug gets spit up and starts walking back. So. Not something that works for this story, but it might work well for you. So I'm just going to go to before I pasted the frames. All right, so I've got my 37 frames. If I'm happy with the animation, if I'm happy with the timing, and I don't like GIFs that just go really fast. So this is about as, as uh, fast-paced as I'm willing to go. Okay, now I'm going to output it and test it, right, as an actual GIF file, which is going to reduce its quality, but make it so it plays automatically through an online browser. To do that, you know, make sure you save it first as your Photoshop file. So my Photoshop stage assignment five file is now my finished animation file, right? That's where all the, the finishing work happened. I still have all my assets in my assets file, but 
this is where all the magic happened, right? Now I go to file and instead of going to save as, because if you do save as and then choose uh, a dot GIF as your format, you can, you can do a CompuServe GIF, but the problem is that will flatten it, right? And that won't show you the animation. It will just show you whatever image you had turned on in only 256 colors. So you can't do save as. Instead, if you wanted to animate, you have to embed the animation timing into the file. And that's an old technology. So what you do is you say file, and then you say export under file. And you say save for web legacy. This only works on online browsers. Right. Basically, what this is saving is your whole stack of frames. And the GIF will automatically flatten each of your frames, each of your layers, you know, into one frame. And now it's just saving a sequence, in my case, of 37 seven different GIF images. Okay, the settings I like. Um, I usually like adaptive or selective for the way it decides on the color. You can play through and you can play with it. You can see it looks grainier. Here it's showing at 100%. I can zoom out and fit it all on the screen. And then I like the quality to be bicubic smoother. That's how it transitions from one frame to the next. I can play it through, kind of see how that works. Because I have so many tricks with opacity, it's gonna look a little grainy, but these are the 256 pixels, it's gonna, colors it's going to use for its pixels. So I can look at it that way. I can say, okay, maybe try uh, perceptual. And let's see what colors it chooses when it does it that way. And I'll be honest, I don't really know what the differences are. I just know it comes up with different pixels each time. So perceptual, it looks kind of patchier. And I don't like that as much. Selective is one I often use. It depends on your animation. So you can try these different settings. This is just a preview. Yeah, selective looks really grainy. So the best for me is adaptive. It looks the most kind of evenly diffused with those limited colors. And I can see my characters clearly. And I can see the, mo the motion clearly. All looks good. So when I'm ready, I say save. And then I always want to save it to the desktop. And I'm going to call it Carl Assignment 5. And I'm just going to call it Animation. And this time, because we're saving it in web legacy, it's going to automatically be a dot, G, a dot GIF ending. Make sure it's saved to the desktop, because now we'll test it out in a browser. And I know I've done this with a few of you, but I don't think in the demo I've actually outputted a GIF yet, right? So with this animation, I don't think I've outputted a GIF yet. So now I, I see that GIF file on the desktop. I'm going to right click it and open it with a browser. I could use any browser, but I, I like to use Safari for this because I feel bad for Safari. I don't use it for anything. And one thing Safari does is it usually centers your animation on the window. Let's see if it keeps doing that. Okay, so Safari is opening up. My, my animation is large. It's not nearly, you know, 1.3 gigs because it's it's been reduced through GIF and through the GIF priorities. But here I can see it, and it looked pretty grainy in the preview, but you can see at the full resolution of 150 pixels per inch by eight inches, this thing's bigger than the screen, right? And so even though you can see the graininess of the pixels, it comes across as a pretty nice portfolio. And it seems to work and it seems to play. Um, if you do a timing that is shorter than 0.1 frame per second, because you could do 0 0.01 frame per second. And the problem is you won't actually experience what that timing looks like until you output it as a GIF and view it in a browser. But if you stay 0.1 and above, it should pretty much match what you saw in Photoshop. Okay, so now I'm happy with it. So what do I do?